Hi, it's been a while. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Holiday here, and I have been pulling out my hair because I haven't been able to work. Aside from the very important video that I released earlier this month, I really haven't been able to do a whole lot of production, and there's been a very big reason for that. Shortly after going undercover at the Reawaken America tour, I then ended up having a birthday in Vegas. Yep. Yeah, shake. Hooray to me turning 40. Fuck yeah. Sweet. Mm. We're going to burn this town to the ground. Then went to Belize, then got COVID in Belize and was stuck in Belize for a very, very long time. Then it was my kid's birthday. Then I almost broke my foot. Then my camera that I've been using for years to be able to make videos uh, died on me. And that's why I look in much higher definition now because I had to buy a new camera on credit. Then my editing slash streaming PC completely took a dump on me. <gasps> so I had to order new components. Hooray! And then before those components came in, my friend contracted COVID while he was on the other side of the country. So I flew over to help him drive back home. And that took a while as well. Then I put the computer together and it was working. Yes, for five days. And then it stopped working. Oh no. So I had to return the motherboard and the CPU, hoping that that was a problem. And it was not. So then I went and systematically tried everything and found out, oh yeah, I just need a better uh, power supply unit. I guess that's uh, I guess that's probably something that I should have I should have looked into a little bit better. But anyway, now it's working. It's working. You can see me. Um, and so we can make a video. Finally. And so I just so happened to come across something amazing. Absolutely amazing. That happened just a few days ago. And I thought this would be great for a fun video that isn't dealing with something super depressing. And will give me a little bit of breathing room as I continue to work on the big Reawaken America tour video. Which has been due for months. So... Let's talk about Terrence Howard. First and foremost, I like Terrence Howard. I think he's an amazing actor. I've always been a big fan of his ever since Hustle and Flow, Dead Presidents. He's great. He's really, really good at what he does as far as acting. But he also does something else that he's very bad at, and that is pseudoscience. Terrence has always been a little strange. However, it's really only been over the past maybe 10 years or so that he started making wild, wild claims. For instance, he said that he is an engineer and that he was studying chemical engineering and applied materials at Pratt Institute, but he was only three credit hours short of graduating. And he only went for about two years. So that's interesting. But then later on, he went on Jimmy Kimmel Live and claimed that he had earned a PhD degree in chemical engineering from South Carolina State University. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> when did you have time to go get a doctorate in chemical engineering? When Iron Man fired me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of time on my hands. You became Diamond Man all of a sudden. <laughs> Diamond Man, yeah. So you went to, what school did you go to? Well, I went to South Carolina State University and they gave me my doctorate in uh, applied materials and chemical engineering problem with that is is that he never went to that university and that university also does not confer doctorates in chemical engineering he, he did however get awarded an honorary degree of doctorate of human letters after speaking at a commencement ceremony so that's a little sketch so professor howard seems to be a little confused however this really does confer the whole celebrity status thing because uh in many states it is illegal to misrepresent yourself as an engineer. People have gotten into serious trouble for that. Now we're going to kind of take a little bit of a history tour through some of the weird stuff that he's talked about and the strange things that he's involved in. But I do want to say that Terrence Howard comes from a troubled past. And he's had a lot of problems in his personal life as well. Now, I'm not really here to detail those things. We're here to address his claims. But to think that maybe some form of stress or trauma might have kind of influenced him into this wing nutty behavior, I mean, it's possible. Again, not here to psychoanalyze, 
We're here to look at what he really, really claims. Let's, let's jump in. One of the most wild and fascinating base-level concepts that he has is a new language of logic that he calls teriology. And in this, it's a way of justifying this very strange claim he has that one times one equals two. And this is from a book that he, I think, only online self-published. Uh, and, and this is, it's pretty fascinating. Dear world, I've been told by many that the releasing of this truth may pose certain challenges in my life, for there are many institutions that this truth will be viewed as disruptive to their system of profit and gains. Yeah, it's, 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 it's big math, cashing in on all the money they make from telling you that one times one equals one. I want to live a happy and peaceful life and I pray for longevity, not just for me, but for our entire species. Know that I would never harm myself nor anyone else for that matter. Sus? Nevertheless, if my life has to face certain challenges so that this planet can be saved, please do not let these trials that I may have to face be in vain and pray for me as I am praying for you. Now, quite a lot of this book reads uh, basically as waxing poetic, but one thing that I think is pretty interesting, we have put an enormous amount of faith into illogical methods and irrational practices of a flatline philosophy. This is a line of false reasoning that is as dead today as the uninformed individuals who once believed and propagated the foolish notion that the world was flat. And this is a, just a, a, a means nothing. It's a mush mouth statement, uh, not really paying quite very close attention to the fact that most civilizations that had begun to experiment with astronomy did not think that the Earth was flat. It was not a common belief at all. The moment anybody really had the chance to observe astrophysics, even even as far back as, as into antiquity, understood that we were on a ball. It happened a lot. But listen to this. I think the time has come for us to see the world as it truly is, a multidimensional, electrically charging, magnetically discharging, all-shaped, living and breathing being. This is religion. This is just religion. This is his, this is his religion. Um, it is, <laughs> does not represent science in any way at all. So let's get into his equation. It's very, very simple. 1 times 1 equals 1. And it's first value A, second value B, third value is C. Remember the basic laws of common sense. If A times B equals C, then C must be some product of A and B. Yet in order for 1 times 1 to equal 1, the value of either A or B has to be missing from the final product of C. No. What? No. <laughs> it makes no logical sense. Just realize there's so much dog hair on this microphone. Anyway, when you're talking about multiplication in math, now there's many, many different varieties of math. I'm sure there are mathematicians out there probably watching this video uh, who can hang you. Actually, uh, interestingly enough, in this one branch of, and I get it, I understand, but the basic concept that he's trying to break the brains of people is in baseline multiplication in specific and just basic fundamental maths. That's it. And if we take the basic statement of one times one, you can also think of it as one times whatever, or really anything, because you're not necessarily, when you're talking about multiplication, always talking about a value of amount. Rather, one has to be a value of amount. There is that many of this, and then the descriptor of how many of those there are. So if you have five times three, you could say that five is the value. That is how many you have, and then how many sets of that you have. So I have five apples, but I also have three groups of those five apples. So if you added them up, you'd get 15. Simple as that. If you have one apple and you have only one group of that one apple, you can't magically make another apple appear. You've just got one apple. But that's what this whole entire book is. This whole entire book is trying to push the idea that you can, you can somehow pull energy out of something singular, that there is more than just the one inside the one. This is also one of the reasons why a lot of his science has to deal with hydrogen. You see, hydrogen is the most simple chemical in the known universe, and it is also 
the most common. It is roughly 75% of all normal matter in the universe, as far as we know, is hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron and one proton. Absolutely no neutrons. And so this concept of, and he's, he's used this statement before, a zero-point energy field, is that if universally in the world, there or in the universe, there is so much hydrogen, if you can find a method by which to make that hydrogen be more than hydrogen, one times one equals two, that generation of energy is free energy. That's the idea. That's it. Now, what proof does he have? He doesn't have any. <laughs> he wrote a weird book. That's it. Just to hammer home, the last one that I want to read to you from this book, because on, it's free. You can go check it out anytime that you want to. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. And it is full of brain drain. But just listen to this on the basic principles of mathematics. Before we learned how to roll over or gain the ability to master the movements of our tiny fingers, we received our very first lesson in mathematics. It was given to us by those that loved us, our parents who taught us how to count with encouraging smiles, accompanied by the most affectionate tone in their voices. Before we could even focus our newborn eyes, our loved ones stood over us beaming with pride while they recited the first ten numbers of our present number system. You have one, two, three, four, five fingers on this hand. Now let's add the five on this hand. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten fingers all together. Then came the kisses. Ah, oh, the kisses. This is all done while they changed our diapers and lovingly rubbed lotions and oils onto our skin. Gently tugging on our hearts while counting our fingers and toes the stories of little piggies that gave math and the concept of numbers a warm and inviting place within our hearts, patiently reassuring themselves that we were made practically perfect with all of our necessary parts in place. This is very important to understand when you're trying to figure out the principles of mathematics. Thank you, Terrence Howard. <clears throat> We didn't know it then, but we would soon come to understand that they were simply adding one number to another number or in order to make it a larger number. For this is the ground rules of addition. And multiplication is rooted in simple addition. Therefore, the same rules that apply to addition must apply when multiplying a set of numbers. No, we just went over this. But likewise, if we understand that multiplication is the exact opposite of division then the laws concerning division must be in conjunction with the established rules of multiplication. Well, they are. One divided by one is one. Yeah, what? <laughs> what? Remember the associative law. When A and B are positive integers, that A is to be added to itself as many times as there are units in B. The addition of a number to itself as often as is indicated by another number. You have just accurately described multiplication and debunked your own claim. Amazing. Anyway, let's uh, let's listen to him talk about it a little bit uh, in an appearance on The View. What's that? Well, I'm going to talk about this since we're here. Go ahead. Okay. Now, a couple years ago, I did an article for the Rolling Stones, and they said I was crazy because I was telling them that the square root of 2 was a rational number. This is the proof yeah. that the square root of 2 is a rational number. Mm, I like how he had to bring his uh, his plastic model in. He has, has confessed that he spends a lot of his free time just making stuff like this, like, like a lot. And when I was at Oxford, now this is the point where four bubbles meet equally and oppositely. Can I touch it? Yes, and it's where 12 planes mm -hmm. meet. This is an undiscovered geometry that I'm now making known to the world here on this show. <laughs> Four years ago, and so far we haven't had any big innovations in Terrence Howard's uh, bubble geometry, but amazing. I, I, You know, when I think of the best platform to reveal groundbreaking technology of the zero-point field, I think The View. Yeah, I, I, I think The View. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have to remember our entire world economy is based on one times one equaling one. So if you can prove that an action times an action equals a reaction, which science proves, then one times one must equal more than one. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'd almost feel bad for Terrence Howard at this point, except that the, the whole concept of this is facilitated by him being so confident in the most basically fundamentally incorrect way possible. It's 
it's astonishing. Like, here's another really good example. Uh, he posted this on his Instagram. Uh, it looks like about three years ago. Uh, does uh, $1 bill times $1 bill equal $1 bill? Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, it, it does. Or does $1 bill times $1 bill equal uh, $2 bills? Um, what? Uh, the caption is, Dear friends, I believe that enough time has passed with mankind behaving as if we are living in the dark ages. At last, the proof and the pudding is ready to be served. Go to and download the truth concerning man's flawed approach to math and let me show you how our universe truly works. Just as the sunshine and the rain are free, I'm giving this truth to the world for free. All I ask is that you do something with it. Well, by all means, let's go take a look at his website. And here it is. This is his uh, amazing website with all of the, the proof. Uh, you have uh, a copy of the book, of course. You, we've got some YouTube videos. Interesting. Terrence proves gravity is an effect, not a cause. Okay, linchpin technology illustrations. Ooh, we'll have to take a look at that in a second. But where exactly? How is it? What? What? So also the one that really kicked this off for me was when I found his website for something called Lynchpin. And like with pretty much everything else that he does, it's almost completely incoherent. It's really bizarre. And the website design is, is, is very, very WordPressy. Click here for the linchpin telecommunications information. Now, from what I've been able to discern, this one in specific is trying to make a telecommunications network using his geometry of hydrogen in either an antenna or as a drone. Utilizing emergent technologies, each facet behaves as an independent lens calibrating an incoming wavelet. If that sounds like absolute garbage mouth shit, it is. Uh, <laughs> but also, uh, <laughs> so the basic fundamental principle is that all of these surfaces, and these 77,000 surfaces, are going to be an independent lens calibrating an incoming wavelet. Now, how exactly it's going to pick an individual wavelet for each individual lens to translate that into something coherent? I don't know. I don't know. If this sounds completely incoherent, that's because it absolutely is. Because I gotta be honest with you, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you see on DMT. This is not necessarily something that's going to translate in any way to real-world practical technology, like at all. And so one of the other things they did with this linchpin project was to uh, put a contest out for people to make drones. You know, I've spent most of my life searching for the perfect geometry that would properly define the nature of space and time. Like you do, you know, that's, I mean, you know. We're now building a team of honest professionals that will help aid mankind in understanding the vital role that the linchpin plays in our universe and help assist our fragile species as we strive for a permanent residency and creation, we would like to add your genius to our team. The task is quite simple for the right person, just to design and build the flight controller for the linchpin and become part of our team of consciously driven engineers and together, let's meet the future halfway. They want to see if somebody can make the actual hardware to make this floating bubble geometry thing uh, move. Huh. So now I'm sure you're wondering, um, did they actually make this like crazy sacred geometry linchpin drone thing? Well, actually, quite a few people did. So as you can see, there are quite a few uh, ways in which this uh, appears to work pretty well. Pretty well. The problem with this design, from a purely engineering perspective, is that... It can seem a bit stable, but as you can see from the way it's flying, it has a little bit of a problem with maintaining a type of hover. And that's largely because the design is not intended for it to actually hover. The, the directional way in which you have to stick your fans to make this thing move in one way or the other 
means that you also have to be able to compensate for when you wanted to stop moving in that direction. And when you have, rather than a omnidirectional means of thrust, but instead you now have three, or depending on how you want to think of it, six planes of thrust for lateral motion, not up and down, things get kind of tricky. So, sure, yeah, I mean, it it works, but what the hell are you going to use it for? And furthermore, I, and I, I, I hate to be that guy, because the thing is, we should innovate, and we should try new things, and, you know, uh, good on Terry for coming up with an idea, and maybe a lot of people had their, their noodles tickled by trying to solve this problem, but to be honest, sometimes a design is just inherently good, and you can improve off of that, and the uh, flat plane rotors of traditional drones, they work really well because they're very stable. And I really like this guy because he he shows his crashes too. He shows that it's not just like, of course it works perfectly. You know, you can you can see how when it starts to tilt and rotate, it loses a lot of its stability and it just goes plop. But a lot of the people in the drone community were doing this because, hey, it's a famous actor and he has a drone design, so let's do it and it's fun. Not really quite realizing that this is building a basic fundamental of a, a, a kind of wild pseudoscience mystical faith system. And if this is like the sacred geometry of hydrogen, you'd think that it would be a flawless design. But so far, uh, nope. Anyway, the real crux of this video and the main reason why I even wanted to talk about this to begin with is because now Terry has decided that he is going to take his concept, his philosophy of one times one equals two, and he's going to try and implement it into the real world. So this is Terry in Uganda, and he is delivering a speech. I think it is very important that we watch this. You know, I was born Terrence Deshaun Howard. I've become an actor. You know, I've been nominated for Oscars and Golden Globes and and SAG Awards, but those weren't the things that really moved me. As a child, I studied chemical engineering at Pratt Institute. As a child? You, wait, as a child? Was there for two years until I saw that there was an inconsistency with the math there. And so I went out to explore a new way of understanding how the universe worked, and I was able to define the grand unified field equation they've been looking for and put it into geometry. And then with that geometry, I was able to put props on that. And what I'm saying is now we have invented a new form of flight that I would like to bring here to Uganda. The drones. He wants to bring the drones to Uganda. Terrence Howard. Famed actor has designed using using the grand unified field theory and putting it into geometry a revolutionary new form of flight, which is actually just drone technology in an inefficient design. And he needs to bring it to Uganda, guys. He's gonna bring it to Uganda. But what what are you gonna use these drones for, Terrence? to replace the drones, to replace the helicopters, to replace the planes. We've already, we have all the funding necessary. What we need is just a fertile ground in which to build this. Now, this is the geometry. So, so I, okay, so you're going to replace the drones that are already there, but also the helicopters and the planes. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Terry, but this, I am never... I am never getting into an enormous one of these. That is that is not a thing that's going to occur. I'm sorry, but <laughs> this just does not... You're not selling me on this one, buddy. Sorry. This is the geometry of hydrogen. Of? Of hydrogen. Hydrogen. This is the proton itself. Mm. So any bond that hydrogen can make, our linchpins are able to make. So every bond, every hydrogen bond, your drones can also make. What? We're talking about unlimited bonding, unlimited predictable structures, supersymmetry, and the linchpins are now able to behave as a swarm, as a colony. 
that can defend the nation, that can harvest food. That I'm sorry. I'm sorry. An American coming over to Uganda and being like, hey, I've got this thing. It's a swarm. It can be a colony. Poor choice of words, bud. Poor. <laughs> I'm just. Woo! that can remove plastics from the ocean, that can give the children of Uganda and the people of Uganda an opportunity to spread this and to sell these products throughout the world so we are no longer just selling agricultural products and pieces from the land. We can now sell and take center stage with technology. He wants to turn Uganda into Wakanda. That That's what that... Holy shit. Holy shit. Uh, okay, I have I have I have things I need to say about this. But let's just finish this video. It's got 10 minutes left. 10 seconds left. Oh my god. Ah. Uh. But the main purpose is for to defend the sovereignty of a peaceful place and a peaceful people without having to have our young men lose their lives. Okay. Now it is not my place to speak for the people of Uganda because I am not from Uganda. But neither is Terrence Howard. He's not. He was born in Chicago. And this we that he keeps using when he's talking about this reminds me so much of so, so many uh, pseudoscientists and grifters and snake oil salesmen that go to different countries and just start trying to get people into like their ideas. Like this, this is a new revolutionary medical practice called uh, Miracle Mineral Supplement. This is a zero point energy field known as the sacred geometry of hydrogen. This is, I'm gonna bring you robots, robots that will crash and break. I this is so weird to me. It's gross. It's gross. Look, I if Terry wants to innovate, let Terry innovate. Let him let him be crazy. Let him have his weird, wacky ideas, and it's charming and it's interesting as long as it's not hurting anybody. But when he's not getting a whole lot of traction, where he is going to another country and trying to like sell them on this idea that he's just going to turn their whole country into this fucking utopia, that's kind of fucking scummy. That's really fucking gross, man. And again, I like Terrence Howard. I think he's a great actor. And I find him interesting, although there are some really troubling things about him. But this, this does not make any sense. It really doesn't. And nobody should be taking him seriously at this point until he's proven anything. He has zero publishing credits. He has published no work. He has not demonstrated even the basic fundamentals, and he's lied about having a PhD. And the very notion that anybody's just going to buy into this, and sadly, I think a lot of people probably will, is horrifying. And as much as I really want to like Terry, I he's really coming across as a grifter piece of shit. And uh, that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. I... I I don't really know exactly what else to say about this, except uh, I just I I legitimately hope nobody gives him money uh, to to try and revolutionize, uh, especially the way in which they do agriculture, because as we have seen throughout the the many 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 centuries, is that when somebody gets a really stupid idea on how to you know revolutionize agriculture, it doesn't go well. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, I Yeah, I, th this whole thing was made very quickly because, as you can see behind me, there are wrappers and and uh, bits of, of boxes and stuff from having to build a new editing PC and then also fix the new editing PC because it was not working. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I hope you appreciated this. Uh, I appreciate you. You are wonderful. Uh, check out my Twitch sometime, twitch.tv slash realtopholiday. If you feel like supporting the channel, I know it's been kind of rough the past couple of months, but I should be able to be back back in the saddle. Uh, you can always check out my Patreon. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys for the Wingnut Roundup at the end of the month. From my family to yours, take care of yourselves. See you next time. Bye-bye.